We're now going to look at some of the other features that you might find useful as a teacher with using Google Classroom. So let's first look at students. Let's go into the student view. Now, as a teacher, what I can do is I can click on this button. This will select all the students in my class. And then I have some actions. So I can remove the students. I can mute the students if I don't want them accessing any of the announcements that I've put on. Or this is the great feature. You can click email. If you click email, that will take you to your email and it will fill out your email for you. It will put it in the blind copy. Okay, so that way none of the students know which other students uh, the email is going to. Equally, you can put it into the two. Add your subject, add your body, and then send it. So there is an email that goes out to all your students. In addition, you don't have to select them all. So there may be only two students that you want to email. And you can do exactly the same thing by going to actions and then email. If you want to email individual students, you can click on the email button here and then that will take you to the email screen and you can write an email to an individual student. There is an option at the top here. At the moment it says students can post and comment. You can change this. If you select students can only comment, they won't get the plus sign in the corner of the screen so they can comment on the wall. You can also select that only teachers within the classroom can post. Here is your class code. You can reset that class code or you can disable it. If you reset it, it means anyone with a code from the past can no longer access that classroom. The next thing I'd like to show you is the about screen. Now this can be very useful as a teacher. Here you can add a title to your classroom and give it a description. You can give it a room number and where the class normally meets. There's an option here that will allow you to go straight to the Google Drive folder within Google Drive. And finally, a very useful tool within Google Classroom is a class calendar. So we can see here by clicking on the class calendar, the different events that have happened. Now, as you've been going through this course, we've created a couple of things with assignment deadlines. So for example, this question had a deadline for the 28th of October. This assignment had a deadline for the 30th. So all students will be able to see this calendar and they'll be able to see which assignments are due in and at what time. If you don't want to see your calendar within Google Classroom, you can click it within Google Calendar. And this will open Google Calendar and attach your classroom calendar to your list of calendars. So I can see here, these are the assignments. And as well as my own calendar, I've got my two Google Classrooms that I've created for this course. And finally, a tool that every teacher needs if you're doing co-teaching is this ability to add another teacher. So I can click invite teacher here and then I can search for teachers I know that are existing as teachers in my domain. So I know that Atec Edu 5 is a teacher. I'm going to click on that and then click next and then invite that teacher to my classroom. You can invite multiple teachers and they will all appear up here and they all have the same permissions as you as the owner of the first classroom has. One other point, when you're creating assignments or questions or announcements and you want to make them available to multiple classrooms, you can do that. So let's click on an announcement. Okay, and what we can do, we can click on this drop down menu and we can choose the different classes we want that announcement to go to. The same goes for the question, or the same goes for an assignment. So that's Google Classroom. We've covered most of the things that are available in Google Classroom. One final point that I'd like to mention is this little question mark at the bottom here. If you click on this question mark, you have the option to actually give feedback to Google on future improvements to Google Classroom. So you can ask a question or give feedback. And also you can get extra help from this menu as well. In the final lesson, we're going to be looking at how you can use Google Classroom on a mobile device.